All right, and here we are once again at our upcoming team reviews. Hey guys, it's Skymer here, and welcome back to another episode of my team summaries for my upcoming Scarlet and Violet tournament. In the last episode, we went over teams seven through nine, which were called Rise Up, Famous Last Words, and Reigning Supreme. So in this episode, we're gonna be going over uh, one more single battle, and then another double, and then another single. So we're gonna start off with team number 10. Let's hop right in. Let's not waste any time here. All right, so team number 10 is going to be called Greatest Possessions. And this is an entire team based on Rotom forms. I actually really like Rotom as a Pokemon. I think it is fantastic. Um, I mean, it's definitely not the best electric type out there, but let's be real. This, this Pokemon has the ability to be annoying and also, a couple of the forms of Rotom have been very commonly seen in previous regions um, in competitive. So, particularly, I think the washing machine and the microwave were the most common that I saw, if I remember correctly. So, basically, the entire theme of the Rotom is to be absolutely as obnoxious as possible. And I also have really funny names for all of them, at least in my opinion. So, we, except for, I guess, the first one. Um, it's a reference to where you could initially find Rotom, uh, was in Eterna Forest in, uh, Diamond and Pearl. So, I really wanted to reference that because it was the original form that you found. And then, uh, the other ones are just based on complete, like, funny jokes about the different forms. So, the microwave is called aluminum, as you should never put aluminum foil in the microwave. I actually learned that the hard way. Um, dryer for the washing machine, lol. Leftovers um, for the refrigerator. Number one fan for the fan, he's your number one fan. And Shredder, the lawnmower. Which isn't very funny when you think about it shredding its opponents. So, um, the gimmick of this team is not necessarily a gimmick, it's just the factor that they try to do speed control. So every single one of them knows Thunder Wave. Every single solitary one of them and each one has like a different way of utilizing it so for example you have the uh the lawnmower and the microwave that have the ghost terra type so with that you can paralyze your opponent or a pokemon that's already been paralyzed hex is going to double in power on top of a potential ghost terra so that's a lot of damage now i know what people might be thinking an absorb bulb on on a on a grass-type Rotom? Are you serious? My idea is, is that if Microwave is being attacked and I try to predict a Water-type move to come out of it, um, I can switch into Shredder and instantly proc that Absorb Bulb, which will kind of resist the amount of the debuff that Leaf Storm is going to give it. So that's kind of the vibe that I was going for with that. Um, and yes, Leftovers does have Leftovers. It's... It's a funny haha -ha joke. Um, so anyway, um, but they also all have a different like nature type that revolves around what I would consider their best stat to be, I guess. So aluminum is uh, is like a really really big attacker. That white herb overheat combo is quite scary with double powered hex from paralyzed opponents. It hits really hard, so I wanted to buff its special attack. Dryer and um, the washing machine and the refrigerator have buffed defensive natures. And the number one fan is speed, because I would definitely consider a fan to fly at, uh, to, I guess, rotate at very high speeds. So it, it, it made sense to me, okay? And then Shredder here is just another defense buff. Um, it defends your lawn from tall grass, right? So... I didn't even think of that until now, so. All right, so here's the team review.
All right, can't believe... Can't believe it's raining. What is up with all the sudden weather changes? Like, I'm going from... I, I'm pretty sure that I started this off at night, but I'm not even sure at this point. There was definitely the moon rising over LaVincia, and now it's freaking raining. Welcome to Fall Day, everybody, where the weather never knows when to stop changing. All right, so here we are. It's getting cold up here where we are right now, but I thought this view was magnificent. Um, because this next team just is the spitting image of cold. Team number 11. The next double battle in this tournament is going to be called Frosted Aches. And this is a double battle that revolves around yet another, everybody. Weather team. Um, so this one revolves around snow. And snow is probably the biggest change um, in terms of weather that Pokemon has ever gone through. Um, it's not a new form of weather as it's just kind of like a like a cousin to how it was with hail in so many previous regions. But hail didn't do a lot, in my opinion. There were ways to utilize hail with snow cloak and slush rush and all this other kind of stuff. But, and to break focus sashes, stuff like that. And snow does not damage any anybody on the field, but ice types still get a benefit. Ice types are not known for their defensive abilities. They, they really don't have many resistances at all. And it's really just topped off by a whole bunch of weaknesses. So the snow being able to buff all ice types defense stats by one stage actually makes them a lot more viable in battle. And snow teams are very, very much a thing. So this team has some very interesting uh, terra types and strategies. So first of all, paying, atten paying uh, attention to these terra types is very important. So I have electric terra Obama snow. Dark Terra Frostlass, Water Terra Bear Tick, Normal Terra uh, Skelly Dirge, um, and that will be it. Two Pokemon that have offensive Terra types. But there's a lot of very, very unique typings here, and there's a lot of reasons why. It looks out for a lot of their weaknesses that they have initially. Excuse me for one minute. The air is so dry here, I can't. <laughs> So, anyway, but the strategy of this team is to utilize all kinds of things that are going to benefit from the snow. The first one being Aurora Veil. Also, shout out to Frostlass being one of my favorite Pokemon ever. Um, so, Aurora Veil is basically like light screen and reflect put together. It flat out just reduces the damage from physical and special moves, but there is a difference. Light Screen and Reflect buff defenses by 50% each, but Aurora Veil will, only, will do both at the same time, but only give you a 33% resistance. So, you don't have to worry about taking two turns to set them up, but you also don't get as many uh, as much defensive effect. Um, so, Frostlass is going to be more of a dodge build. That Bright Powder, Snow Cloak, Double Team ability just really, really increases your evasion very quickly. Um, so, in addition, um, Obama Snow being Electric Terra will instantly take away that Fire-type quad weakness, and that's actually the reason Skeledurge is here, to also bait out Fire-type moves. It's a very defensive and bulky Pokemon. It's got a lot of stuff going for it in terms of the ability to help these Ice-types to resist one of their most, um, their most, their easiest weakness to spot. But normal Terra Skeledurge, it's not my original idea. Um, and I don't really know who came up with it first, but I personally gained inspiration um, for normal Terra Skeledurge um, from a very, very amazing YouTuber and Twitch streamer, Jamie Jigsaw. If you have not seen his content, go check it out. I highly, highly recommend. He's funny, he's talented. He knows his way around some very, very unique uh, Scarlet and Violet teams that he put together. I, I, if he gives me permission, I will definitely be linking one of his videos down in the description below. So go ahead and check that out. Um, I highly recommend you to check out his content. It is something very, very worthwhile. Um, so 
Regardless, um, figuring out a Pokemon that's going to Terrastalize on this team is going to be very important for me as a player to figure out, do I go defensive? Do I go offensive? Like with my Blizzard Never Melt Ice Ice Terra uh, Frost Moth, that Blizzard's going to be doing a lot of damage. And listen to that cry, everybody. Is this cry not the most beautiful thing you've ever freaking heard? She knows she's beautiful. Um, but anyway, here is the team review. Alright, get me get me out of this cold. I hate the cold. I'm not about What are you pointing at? You were just pointing at something. What is over there? That's that that that's a cloud, dude. I'm concerned for gaming pool's well being. Nothing like a good old sandwich to uh to cure the old appetite. Alright, let's go into uh team number twelve. The next single battle is going to be called Team Charm. It's kind of a reference to another uh, Pokemon title, if you know the reference. Um, then we are uh, then we are most definitely going to be friends, if we aren't already. So this team revolves around Pokemon that I that I personally think are some of the most beautiful, uh, cute, elegant, whatever the words you wanted to describe them as. These Pokemon are just amazing in terms of just being just I don't know just whether it be elegant classy beautiful sassy like here um but yeah so that's basically the whole premise of the team is more towards design rather than synergy this is basically just a pretty traditional team of all different Pokemon that just kind of balance each other's typings out for a long for a long portion of it um, at least that's by my understanding. But one of the very interesting things is there's a, um, there's three types of lens in this game. We've seen the wide lens, but I haven't shown off the zoom lens or the scope lens yet. So my Altaria holds the zoom lens. Essentially, if Altaria is outsped by the opponent, the zoom lens will then increase even more accuracy on its moves. So I really want to try using this with Hurricane and Sing. Now I know that Altaria is not the slowest Pokemon in the in the world, okay? But it's also not nearly the fastest Pokemon. I mean, this Pokemon's level 75, so you have to think that it's going to be 75 levels lower in... I mean, not 75 levels lower. 25 levels lower when it's going to be in battle, because we're going to set everything to 50. So this Pokemon's not going to have 100 speed. Um, as a matter of fact, it's probably going to be far below that. Um, so what I was kind of thinking about was that if she moves after the, if he moves after the target, Sing will have probably roughly about a 70% accuracy rate, um, which is, which is not terrible. Um, it's still going to be hitting a majority of the time, uh, at least in terms of percentage. But yeah, I mean, there's really not a whole, whole lot to discuss. I do have some pretty unique Terras. I have Psychic Terra Serena to buff that Zen Headbutt. Um, Rose here has Grass Terra. Um, so you definitely have a, a really, really nice um, ability with that um, to get that Petal Dance powered up. And then Miss Magius has an Electric Terra. And that's actually in reference to uh, paying homage to this game um, because one of the gym leaders has the exact same build for... Uh, uh, for their Miss Magius. Um, my Tinkaton is Water Terra, so that's very much defensive. Um, but yeah, so, um, and then the Scope Lens is an item that boosts your critical hit ratio naturally. So, combining this with moves like Sky Attack, Slash, and Shadow Claw, 
that all have enhanced chances of landing critical hits, um, this Pokemon could be critting a lot more often than your uh, typical Pokemon would be able to without it. So I'm really excited to try out this team um, um, in a real competitive setting. Um, again, these Pokemon aren't built always incredibly to be the best that they can be, but let me tell you, kudos to anyone who does Eevee and Ivy training. I don't know how you do it. I really don't. And here's the team review. And that is it for this episode. Um, in the next episode, we will obviously be going over the next three teams as per usual. So I hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your day or night. Take care, guys. Bye.